Okay, great. Um, so uh, yeah, so it, thanks Maggie for the invitation to talk. Um, uh, I saw a message on on the um, OSMUS Slack just saying, "Hey, who does winter mapping stuff?" And I said, well, "I, I like the winter." Um, and um, uh, when she was, said she was looking for people to do a little presentation, I thought this would be be interesting. A few years ago, um, um, I had the, the pleasure of doing at least the initial base mapping with the Array Ice Park, and it's both an incredibly interesting and unique thing, and kind of a tricky mapping challenge. So um, hopefully, you find this uh, um, interesting. Uh, to, to look at and think about here. And maybe on your next visit uh, out, you can uh, improve it a little bit. I'll, I'll point out a few areas where there's still some work to be done. And um, I'll, Rob Savoy is out chipping away at it uh, this week right now. Um, there's always more to map. So um, the Ure Ice Park is in Ure, Colorado, which is in uh, sort of roughly southwestern Colorado. Um, it's pretty far from Denver. If you're not in the area, it's, it's quite a long ways away from there. Um, up in the, the mountains. And um, the Ure Ice Park is a recreational ice climbing park in the Uncompagre Gorge, um, which is a great, uh, it's an amazing river gorge um, up there. Um, what is an, I, an ice park? Um, mm. a, the ice park is a uh, gigantic area, semi-natural area, mostly natural area uh, for recreational ice climbing. Um, it's a world-class ice climbing and competition park. Um, so um, individuals can come and ice climb. There are also competitions held at different times of the year. Um, it's free to visit and climb. Um, uh, you can just show up and if you uh, meet the minimum requirements of the gear, you're welcome to come and bring your gear and climb. Uh, you can also hire guides to, to, climb, to take you to climb if you're, if you're not experienced. Um, it's a really unique public partnership with the city of URA. I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, just a really amazing confluence of um, um, uh, different needs and desires all coming together to form a really unique uh, public benefit. Uh, it's managed by a nonprofit, um, part of why it's free, and it's an augmented natural environment. So the, the Uncompagre Gorge is a completely natural river gorge, and it forms natural ice on its own um, every year. Um, but starting in the 70s, uh, people started encouraging the ice um, either by trying to get additional water sprayed on certain areas or, or even just throwing a rope over a, or a section of rock uh, to encourage a trickle of water and uh, create a seed icicle, which will gradually grow and form more ice to climb on. But now it's uh, extensively augmented. Um, so here's a little picture of one of the one of the climbing areas and a few stats. Uh, the park is about a mile long up the gorge. Um, there's 17,000 vertical feet of climbing routes in 14 different climbing areas, so over 200 kind of individual routes to, to climb. Um, every night, the ice farmers spray 150,000 to 200,000 gallons of water per night out of basically what amount to sprinkler heads um, up on the top of the cliff. Uh, that build up the ice. Uh, the ice farmers care carefully curate their crop all season. Um, so it's always growing and changing. If you visit it in December and then again in February, you know, you're going to be climbing different ice. Um, amazingly, uh, the water is fed exclusively from a Ure reservoir, uh, which is upstream. The reservoir feeds the Ure water, drinking water supply as well as hydroelectric power. And it's gravity fed. Uh, the, this part of the gorge is just below the reservoir. So gravity pulls the water down and creates the pressure to form the ice. Um, and then beautifully in the spring, it melts, it drops back down into the gorge and it moves back into the water system. So um, despite the fact that they're spraying 200,000 gallons of water a night, there's no waste. Um, in fact, in some sense, it's even less wasteful than a regular reservoir because the water is impounded in the form of ice on the walls of the gorge and 100% of it, it goes back into the water system as it melts. Uh, this is what it looks like in the summer on the left side here. Um, it's really beautiful in the summer. And uh, on the right side is what it looks like in the winter after the ice farmers have been at work. About two thirds of the way down on the picture on the, on the winter side, you can see a tiny climber for scale. It's a little hard to tell what the scale of that picture is until you see the um, tiny little climber down here, most of the way down in red. Um, it is uh, terrifying. I'm a little scared just looking at it now. Um, 
you know, mapping the area is incredibly difficult. I initially started by trying to do some desktop mapping of the area, even from my own personal knowledge. And I just couldn't really get anywhere until I was back on site again. Um, the gorge is over 100 feet deep. Um, in many places, it's overhung. Um, and it can be as narrow as only 10 feet wide. I mean, you can almost reach across it in places. Um, so there's no good GPS signal when you're down in the gorge. Um, there's no good aerial imagery. There's no good LIDAR. Um, there's just not a lot of, you know, external ways to view the space. Um, everything you do, um, everything I had to do for mapping um, was um, involved a lot of triangulation to known features um, and just detailed notes um, about uh, kind of how far away different things were from one another. Of course, it's covered in ice. Um, helmet and crampons are the minimum even to enter the ice park. Uh, makes it hard to get around. And it's difficult to reverse. Uh, the river's running even through the winter, so you're, you're crossing over a, a running, partially frozen river. Uh, you can't just walk up and down the whole thing. Um, there's some unique features um, in, the, in the park to be mapped. Uh, so I've highlighted a couple of the tags that are a little less common um, that I selected uh, for, for mapping some areas. So natural equals cliff is the kind of predominant tag. Um, these are all natural cliffs um, on the side of the gorge. Um, we gave them sport climbing. Um, and then climbing ice 13, in that case, indicates that there's approximately 13 routes to be climbed on the cliff whose name is New Frontier. Um, so there's you know about, I think it's 14 some different cliffs, uh, named cliffs that are um, uh, mapped. And I'll, I'll show you in a moment how those render in a couple of different rendering engines. Um, there's seasonal paths. Um, so Rob has been adding some of these. Um, there's paths to go over the ice at the bottom of the gorge, uh, but they're only present in the winter when the gorge is mostly frozen over. Um, so they're, um, they're highway paths, um, but they need a sack scale, in this case alpine hiking, because um, you wouldn't just, you wouldn't take a stroller on them. Uh, they're <laughs> little paths across a frozen river. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, seasonal equals winter, um, which isn't incredibly supported, uh, but at least it's uh, the right tag. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, that's, that's me climbing there. Uh, that's, that's Rodney, who's joined us here, He's waving from up on some, on some thing. Um, there's some more unique features. This is another view looking down um, off one of the terrifying little walkways. Um, there's a hydroelectric pen stock that runs through the park. Um, it's, um, I don't know, it's maybe 24 inches in diameter, and it is the hydroelectric pipeline that draws from the same reservoir that the ice park water is drawn from. Um, the operator of that hydroelectric is actually a big um, a uh, friend of the ice park and has uh, really helped make the um, water arrangements and land arrangements work for the park. Um, so you have to climb over and under the penstock several times. So um, we mapped features like ladders to get over the penstock, um, or there's places where there's kind of a tunnel that goes under the penstock. Um, there's also an interesting emergency ladder. So there's a you know a highway path ladder. Yes, there's a hundred foot ladder. Um, to get out of one of the climbing areas. Um, some of the climbing areas you can hike out of if uh, it's a little spicy for your taste. Um, but a couple of the climbing areas, once you get lowered in, you have to climb out. Um, it definitely provides a um, unique motivation to uh, put one foot in front of the other while you're climbing or mapping. Um, so a few rendering tips here, thoughts. Um, so here's how it renders in the default Carto. Um, uh, one thing that's actually kind of nice, and I actually think this changed since I started mapping this two years ago, um, the cliffs are indeed named. So the, you know, the cliffs here, Kids Wall, Cowboy Up, um, Pick of the Vic here, um, the names of those cliffs do show up. And um, all these paths are the um, uh, various access paths and canyon access paths that are used inside the park, as well as the park boundary. Um, the park boundary is... Um, uh, land use equals recreation ground, um, which is going to generate all sorts of opinions. Um, this is definitely a good example of a, of a park that defies categorization. It's not quite a nature reserve. It's not quite a protected area. It's not quite an urban park. It's, I don't know what it is. 
um, frankly, open to feedback there. Um, recreation ground uh, just seemed appropriate. Um, if the, the Austral Australians can do barrel racing and put that in a recreation ground, I figured we could do ice climbing and put it in a recreation ground. Um, this is what it looks like in Gaia Topo. Um, actually, I like this one quite a bit um, because it identifies that these um, cliffs have the climbing tag applied. So it's correctly identified these as climbing areas and put a little crag icon there. It hasn't caught that it's ice climbing specifically, but yeah, it's close enough. Um, map box outdoors um, is nice as well. You can see all the cliffs. Um, map box outdoors would be almost perfect for this if it rendered the name of the cliff. So that would be that would be great because then you would see uh, you could see all the named cliff areas. And um, thunder forest outdoors. Um, the perimeter trails are named nicely. Um, but unfortunately, we don't even see the cliffs or their names. So that's not a very useful rendering output here. Um, and open cycle map. Um, again, I, you, you wouldn't ride your bike down there, but I just wanted to see how it would look. Again, it doesn't render natural equals cliff. So um, you kind of lose all the, um, the part specific features. You could ride your bike up Camp Bird Road. Um, that's a very terrifying road. Um, there's some there's a section of it that's essentially on a cliff, and it's been sort of carved out um, in order to in order to drive on the road. So there's a sheer cliff on one side, and the road camps towards the cliff. Um, and there's water that runs across the road. It's it's very scary. And of course, there's natural challenges to to mapping. You know, if you're not bleeding, you're not mapping. Um, that's a uh, Rod and I after uh, after climbing here. I think anyone who's done um, more than a pitch or two of ice climbing has been uh, hit in the face with a big piece of ice at least once. Um, and of course, um, wanted to highlight Rob Savoy's work um, down there. He's done a ton of mapping in the URA area and um, is um, probably can answer his mentioning questions after this on some software he's testing out with HOT um, to do detailed mapping of um, difficult to map areas and um, is currently mapping all the irrigation lines that's, that feed all the sprinklers. Um, like I said, there's over two miles of irrigation line um, to run all the, the ice farmer spray systems. And um, that's my lightning talk. Um, questions? <laughs>